Hello, and welcome to today's Command and Control Peek and Play demo. We'll give everyone a minute uh, after our start time to join and connect, and then we'll get started. Hello everyone and welcome to today's Command and Control Peek and Play demo. My name is Mike Cooper, I'm the Senior Security Manager at Security Innovation, and I'll be walking you through Shadow Bank, one of our purposely built insecure sites. We encourage asking questions throughout today's session using the questions pane, and I'll pause during the demo as well at the end of the session to see if there's any questions. Uh, last but not least, everyone will receive a code uh, after our demo to explore Shadow Bank for the next 24 hours. We'll also send a link via email, which will include a recording of today's demo um, and have the slides available for, for download as well. All right, so let's get started. So Command and Control is part of Security Innovation's Attack and Defend training solution. Uh, with Attack and Defend, the goal is to teach about web and mobile application security issues uh, by getting experience thinking like an attacker um, and then getting guidance on how to defend against these attacks through computer-based application security training. So I think it's fair to say that uh, most people would not think to try uh, putting a negative quantity in an option card. Uh, and I'd also like to point out it's not legal to do that on real websites. But once you show them in a safe box like command and control, how a vulnerable application uh, would blindly multiply the negative quantity with the price, um, and then explain that the application would, in that case, issue a refund on the credit card instead of charging it. Um, and depending on how deep-rooted the business logic flaws in the application are, um, it might even still ship you the merchandise. The shipping department just gets um, uh, an order that says, ship this thing to this uh, address, even though the, the credit card uh, was issue, issued a refund because of the negative number. So it introduces the, uh, the learner into the mindset of the attacker. Uh, mostly curious, um, and progressing to slightly devious. So with command and control, we can uh, run a, a one-day event, uh, and that'll generate a report card. And then using that report card, our instructor can make recommendations on computer-based training modules for uh, the departments or the, the different players, um, and essentially help find the, the gaps and um, close them. So the 2017 OS Top 10 is probably the most common example that um, we uh, put out as, as part of a, a curriculum, but um, it's, it's pretty widely uh, applicable, but um, up to really any 10 modules from our pretty extensive catalog are available. Um, Security Innovation also offers in-depth instructor-led training, um, and these are proctored by security engineers with uh, years of industry experience. Command and Control is our cyber range solution um, and it's like lab time, so learners get practical time to understand the impact of these vulnerabilities on real working applications. Um, each of the vulnerable, the vulnerable websites are wrapped in an environment that uh, provides gamified components like automated scoring, um, and we have multiple applications in different verticals, uh, and each one has appropriate business logic in the application. Um, and we also have a fictional developer with his own web presence for a realistic, fully engaging, um, and holistic experience of having an application uh, and its developer uh, have a presence out on the web. Command and Control is available as in-person events, so our staff are on site to proctor the event and guide the participants, um, or self-manage events. So if you have your own security staff, your own training program, uh, you can use the platform uh, as, as you like and run your own events. 
We use command and control for uh, events where the focus is application security. So if you have a less technical audience, you can do something like uh, to get security awareness. So uh, show project stakeholders and project management and executives uh, how important security is uh, in your product and how easy it is to um, quickly go from you know a vulnerability in a web application to some financial losses. Um, or also just as uh, sort of to get excitement around application security. So maybe you've just did a big security push and you want to do um, some competition. Um, a lot of uh, organizations will also uh, put prizes for the, the top three places as well. Uh, obviously, I think that uh, command and control works great alongside computer-based training or instructor-led training as learning labs. So uh, if you go and say, let's learn about SQL injection, you do a module on SQL injection, now you come back over to command and control, and you look at an example of SQL injection or a couple examples of SQL injection uh, in different verticals and different features and see um, essentially how SQL injection can be used in different, um, different ways. Um, and lastly, command and control can uh, be used to evaluate security professional interview candidates. So we can turn off the gaming and the scoring pieces. Uh, you have a vulnerable web application um, on the employee, uh, the uh, interviewee side, you can see uh, how the how the interviewee is doing, um, and then you can compare that to uh, what they submit as far as uh, reporting the defects they found. So command and control um, includes data dashboards and both group and individual reporting for player strengths and weaknesses. We've got real-time metrics, so uh, they enable the staff uh, to, to monitor progress. So you can see things like uh, the last time a vulnerability was scored or uh, the weakest categories um, kind of gives you an idea of where the event should go. So if you notice that um, people are having trouble with something specific like cross-site scripting, you can do um, a breakout session and say, hey, everyone, let's take 15 minutes to talk about um, cross-site scripting. Um, the metrics and reporting also supports filtering by vulnerability category, difficulty level, and challenge type. So you can drill down into the metrics that are ga gathered um, across the event. Um, and then uh, we have individual report cards for each of the players. So uh, it includes the players completed and the missed challenges, again, giving another data point um, on things like knowledge gaps. So I'm going to switch over to my VM here. Okay, it should be sharing that now. So here we have the command and control home screen. That includes the launch panel. So each player has their own instance of our vulnerable site in AWS. Um, you can reset the database or reset the full VM uh, if the site uh, or the application breaks due to testing, and that doesn't affect uh, the player score, or more importantly, other players' experiences. So today we're going to take a look at the Shadow Bank financial site. When I click play, again, I'm brought to my own instance of this site um, out in Amazon Web Services. Uh, there's nothing to install, so many of the challenges can be completed right in the browser. Uh, many of the issues are opportunistic and can just be found by curiosity. So uh, what happens when I change uh, this number uh, in this URL bar? What happens there? So here is our shadow bank application. Um, as a developer and a tester, um, one of the things that I do first uh, is uh, recon. So I'm gonna take a look at some of the information in the site, take a look around. So uh, the developer's name is Arnold Tapoodle, and I'm gonna use one of my favorite hacking tools, just a simple web search. So um, Arnold Tapoodle is our fictional developer. He has a Gmail, LinkedIn, and Facebook account. Uh, he's posted a blog with information about a vulnerability in the framework he created, um, and his social media presence might give some insight into his password reset questions. Uh, he may have included more information than he intended in a screenshot that he shared online. So there's social engineering built in um, on those kind of levels, but uh, if we're proctoring the event, if Security Innovation is hosting the event, um, we can also do uh, additional social engineering interactions. So we'll monitor those Gmail, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn accounts and award points for social media and exploitation attempts. So if you find something like cross-site scripting, not only will you get the points for it, uh, but then if you take that vulnerability and send it to Arnold uh, in some form and say, hey, um, Arnold, can you check this out? I found this on your, your site. Um, and if you try and essentially use that vulnerability against Arnold, we'll give you some points for social engineering. So our, our applications are more than just individual challenges. We have, again, these are um, 
working applications. Um, and we also have that, that human component as well. So um, it's more than just having the site on the internet. It's also having that realistic human component where his mistakes are out on the web for all to see and, and hopefully learn from what an attacker can do uh, with, this, with this information. So I'm going to take a look at the, uh, the login form first. So I'm actually just going to paste Arnold's name in there, and we'll see why in a second. So uh, just to, to see how the site works, again, one of the first things I do is explore the site and figure out how it works. So um, I don't have a username yet, so I was going to try Arnold's. So I get a notification. There's an audio notification uh, that you guys can't hear, but um, it's Mortal Kombat type sounds that add some excitement. So you can hear when people near you are scoring or they can hear when you're scoring. Um, we get this notification, we completed this information disclosure challenge for 10 points. Uh, and we can see there's a lot of information about the application here. So what we'll do is we'll come back over and just to give an idea of, of the rest of uh, the features here in uh, the launch panel, we can take a look and see about uh, where we are in the challenge. So we've completed one of the 48 challenges in this site. Uh, here's what we found and when we found it. And then we can take a look at the scoreboard. So we see everyone else that's on the scoreboard um, and we are highlighted here. So we can see uh, where we are uh, in comparison to the other players. And if we leave this up uh, on say a projector or something like that, it updates in real time. So you can watch people moving up and down the scoreboard. So I do say moving down the scoreboard, you can um, change in or exchange some of your points. So if you have 100 points uh, and you're stuck, uh, you can buy a hint uh, from the hint store um, and you'll lose those 100 points, but hopefully it'll get you uh, moving forward. You can also submit flags. So uh, some of the challenges can't be scored automatically. Um, and then what we'll do is give you a flag and you can come submit it uh, to get those points. So if you don't have enough points uh, for a hint, uh, or maybe the instructor is also not available, uh, we do have some help available for you. So we have a cheat sheet um, that includes information on some testing techniques, where to look in web and mobile applications for certain issues, um, and then a description of, of each of these different issues. So um, really to, to help people get started uh, with techniques and example test cases. So we have some uh, cross-site scripting, we've got our single quote character here for SQL injection, so uh, different information on different attacks, and then we also have uh, some tools and things like that. So I'm going to come back to our site here. So based on what I saw in the application, um, I think I can turn this into a SQL injection authentication bypass. So I'm going to use um, a pretty standard pattern, but uh, I want to point out that um, we are not looking for specific strings here. So we're running a real uh, SQL server on the back end. And uh, what we do is we evaluate whether or not the, the attack was successful. We don't look for uh, the exact syntax. So any valid SQL will work. So this time, um, using the information I found, uh, I'm in the application uh, and I got uh, 200 points because this is a much more severe vulnerability um, and I can take a look uh, around at the application and, and see what's going on. So lastly, I'll take a look here. Uh, here's another feature where it's saying to uh, view the transfers and here's the account number. If I do a little bit of looking around, uh, I notice that this exact same number is up here in the URL bar. So if I change this value, uh, and I can uh, essentially just take this number and say, uh, change it to something like five, um, and essentially we're looking in the database at someone else's account. So we get 100 points because we're looking at another account number's uh, transfers. In this case, there are no transfers, but um, that's one of the vulnerabilities where uh, you, there should be some validation there. So I don't want to give away too many of the vulnerabilities in the site. Um, there are many vulnerabilities for a multitude of different uh, difficulty levels. Uh, we cover as many vulnerability classes and individual exports, uh, exploits that reward players when they gain insight uh, into how an attacker can utilize a system uh, by understanding the use cases and then thinking in terms of abuse cases. 
So I'm going to switch back over to my slides. So I'm going to take this opportunity to see if there are any questions. Not yet. Okay. So for um, the different sites that we have, um, from an attacker's perspective, uh, business logic attacks are some of the most lucrative. So it's important to get insight into di different business flows um, to anticipate those different types of attacks uh, and those attack scenarios. So um, we have uh, an HR site uh, called Account All, um, and it helps organizations kind of understand uh, there's more than one way to, to lose uh, or, or to have uh, an impact on an organization's bottom line. So um, a lot of people think of stealing product or stealing funds, um, but with this HR application, um, you could do something like if, uh, submit a time off request. And normally the time off request re require uh, approval from a manager, but um, if the employee can bypass that approval and essentially get unlimited uh, vacation time without approval, that's another way um, for uh, someone to essentially affect the bottom line of the company uh, without directly uh, showing up in financial transactions and things like that. Uh, we, of course, have an e-commerce site, so it's got all the features you'd expect, uh, a shopping cart, there's product reviews, um, and there's uh, even a community around the, the, skateboards, uh, the skateboarding community that they can share uh, pictures and things like that as well. So there's um, all kinds of e-commerce features and flows that you would expect. Our uh, social media site, InstaFriends, so you have uh, invite-only groups of people, um, they can share uh, information within their group, so there's uh, public groups that can share information widely, um, and essentially if there's ways to get at the, uh, the information uh, that you shouldn't have access to. And again, these are all different uh, features and flows that you'd expect in a social media site. We have another uh, financial services site called Gold Standard. Um, that has uh, more difficult uh, challenges. The, the shadow bank site uh, is, is geared more towards uh, beginners, whereas the gold standard doesn't have a lot of the same uh, low-hanging fruit, so it's a little bit more difficult. Um, it's got a little bit better validation and things like that. Um, and lastly, we have our mobile application. So Run Stoppable is an Android application um, and supporting web so services backend for a fitness tracking application. Um, and really, it gives uh, access to many of the vulnerability classes common in uh, enterprise client server systems. So things like uh, secrets improperly stored in the application, um, and we're even able to, to work in some legacy issues like uh, buffer overflows with risky JNI calls. So the mobile application um, can be run on either a real device or in an emulator, um, and then you set up your environment and um, use that as your uh, interface for testing. So security innovation, uh, how we can help with your security challenges. On the attack side, our command and control cyber range engages players of all skill sets uh, with fully engaging hacking simulation uh, to think like an attacker. On the defense side, uh, we offer a full suite of knowledge solutions. So learn how the attacks work um, and then focus on how to defend against them. And then on the assess side, we perform world-class security assessment services uh, throughout the entire development life cycle. All right, so wrapping up. Um, as a reminder, everyone will receive a code to explore Shadow Bank uh, for 24 hours after our demo. Don't forget about the guides or the hint store if you get stuck. And again, we'll also send a copy of today's recording via, um, uh, via email, so you get a link to that uh, in case you want to refer back to it. Um, again, just a quick recap of our command and control solution. It's available as in-person or standalone events. Uh, we've got multiple applications, a fictional developer, uh, with his own web presence for that fully uh, holistic experience. And we've used the solution uh, for standalone events alongside computer-based training or instructor-led training as learning labs, um, and even for evaluating interview candidates for security professionals. Since each of these is a working application, it's got appropriate uh, features and business logic, um, and it, each of those verticals means there's more realistic attack scenarios. 
And again, business logic attacks are some of the most lucrative, so getting experience thinking like an attacker helps anticipate abuse cases. Um, you're able to do things like uh, gain some knowledge from that information disclosure vulnerability we saw um, and maybe use it uh, in other areas, so some of the information uh, about the site. So it's, again, not compartmentalized challenges, um, but uh, it's actually a fully working site. So I see we do have a couple questions here. Uh, let's see, are there different applications with different technology stacks? So Java.net. Um, so that's a good question. No, uh, right now we don't. We are working on some other platforms, but really, um, you know, if we, we look at it like the lessons that are taught um, aren't technology specific. So things like input validation, uh, information disclosure, uh, et cetera, those apply to all types of applications, frameworks, and languages. Um, and again, we also provide exposure, uh, exposure to some of the classes of vulnerabilities that are typically affect thick clients or client server applications uh, with that mobile application. Um, so one of the questions is what is the hardest challenge on there? Um, any XXE or SSRF? So we um, have a number of challenges in, in the frequency that frequently asked questions, and I think we might list out the different types of vulnerabilities, but um, the, the hardest challenge is kind of hard to, to answer, depends on your uh, perspective. Um, I could say that we cover uh, almost all of the OS top 10 2017, probably the exception there is um, the, the part about logging um, and auditing. That's kind of hard to show on, on this side of the fence, but um, essentially, we do have um, vulnerabilities in, in multiple classes. You've got the multiple vulnerabilities in the same class, so you've got uh, increasing difficulty levels. Um, so we can also answer about uh, specific vulnerability uh, types as well afterwards. So again, you can um, contact Get Secure at Security Innovation for more detailed uh, answers. Um, let's see, so is the 24 hours from registration or from time of this presentation? It's actually from the time of this presentation. So uh, once we're done, um, you guys can go take the code and go uh, go register, um, and then uh, you'll have access uh, for the next 24 hours. Um, and then lastly, let's see, what types of players have you had the least and most success with? So the, um, that's a great question. Um, we've actually observed success from all types of groups, so uh, developers, of course, um, but also accountants, executives. Um, you know, uh, some of the the uh, some of the vulnerabilities are, are pretty opportunistic. So again, you know, you see an account number, you change it in the URL bar. You don't really need to understand HTML or, or SQL or, or things like that. Um, and if you understand certain business rules, so things like authorization, uh, anyone that's naturally curious, uh, and again, potentially slightly devious, uh, can excel. So uh, it really does work for uh, all audiences. All right, I think that's it for questions. And that's it. So thanks everyone for your time. Look for that email and good luck.